So I'm very happy to be with Mary Curtis Radcliffe in her studio. Today is October 17th, 2022. And we are looking at one of Mary Curtis Radcliffe's early sculptures. Um, could you tell us how this is built, what materials you've used, and how you've structured it and gone about putting it together? Right. Well, um, I, this is part of what I call the Goddess series. I did seven of these large pieces. This one's about six feet, six foot one, something like that. And I started with an armature of hardware cloth, which is steel and very um, strong. So I built the armature here, and then I did these cutouts on the side to give it some form. And it's actually uh, a commemorative piece to Josephine Baker, who's one of my heroines. So could I ask you yeah. at this point already, Curtis, um, just this, this reinforcement along the edges, what material do you have underneath the metal that goes on the inside that's lining? This is what? just paper. So, it's, so you've got paper, paper there. Here. And how is the paper adhered to um, your, your metal Armature. I mean, is, is this like what we would call chicken wire if we went into a hardware store? Is it akin no, to that? No, it's, it's like chicken wire, but it's square um, instead of um, uh, six-sided. Aha. Uh -huh. And it's really strong. It comes in different um, meshes. This one is about a half inch. This is half inch. And do you have um, joints that are soldered along this structure? Or no. is it, um, no, not at is all. it woven? It's, it's all, it's woven with wire. It, it, it comes in four, uh, <clears throat> four foot length. So this is one length. And then I added more on and I uh, wired it together all the way around. So it's a combination of uh, metal because these are, are uh, uh, costume wings. They're actually barrettes. And um, I got them from my cousin who said, would you like some wings? I said, yes. <laughs> so this huge box of wings. So I used them as a decorative element on them. And, um, and then at the top, this is a feather boa I got from a costume shop. And this is Japanese paper here. And then these were earrings. These little wings here were earrings. And I popped the back off of them and I collage them in a pattern all the way around. Mm -hmm. So what, this follows one of my um, rules of my 50 year old practice, which is you can make something big, but you have to be able to pick it up yourself. <laughs> so this I can pick up, good idea, and turn around and there's the back of it. Oh, amazing. Okay, so these barrettes, these wings that you have on there, are they attached with the back of the barrette clip that it came with? Or yes. have they been removed also and adhered differently? No, they were attached um, the, as a barrette. As a barrette. And, but then I covered them with paper on the inside <laughs> too, so they wouldn't pop open unexpectedly. Yeah. And, and, and the earrings have been adhered to paper, and do you know what materials you used for adhesion there? Probably adhesive? archival glue. Archival glue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I glued this together with archival. I always use archival glue just as a um, uh, precaution for, so it doesn't yellow, it doesn't fall apart, but it's really good. It's white and it's archival. Uh, Line Co. it's called. Oh, great, great. Now here's the big question, the really huge question. Should something disastrous happen and your boa lose its feathers, imagine in time, right. um, yeah. how would you feel about um, conservators coming in and replacing it with a different boa? The entire it would be piece? fine if it was black. If it were black. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, your feathers are problematic because they get little mites sometimes yeah. in them and they eat them, but I haven't had any problem with the, this particular group of feathers, but, um, you know, I suppose I could, it could be sprayed or something, but I just don't, haven't paid much attention to it because it hasn't been a problem, yeah. but it's not that it couldn't be a problem. Well, it's been stable here yeah, for a long right. time. Yeah, right. This was, piece was done in 1991, mm -hmm. and okay. it looks pretty much like it did then. 
Fantastic. So um, when we talk about, I mean, fur and, and feathers are sort of, uh, you know, problematic over time just because right. of um, the fact that we have biology to think about. Uh, but do you have other um, objects that you've created that use other materials where you are concerned about um, their maintenance and, yes, and I do. fragility? Yes, there's another piece um, over here and it's called Telepon and Necklace and it's up on the wall. And um, this piece I did um, from, with the Norfolk pine needles from the big island of Hawaii. I brought them back and uh, made this piece. I've never shown it because it's very, very fragile. And um, there are parts of it that have already broken off, like this one's broken. And it's very dry and very brittle. And so, um, Probably the best way to display this would be in a plexiglass box. So it couldn't um, be broken any more than it is. Um, I haven't repaired it because it would, it would be really, really difficult and I haven't actually shown it. So I just have it as one of my early pieces from 1982.